oops, I changed the past. I revised using Neville Goddard's revision technique, not even really realizing at the time what I did. Mind-blowing results, and I can't wait to share the experience with you. I have many, many, many revision stories to share and manifestation success stories and techniques, and I have so much fun bringing this information to you. So stay to the end of this video and you can hear how just by having a conversation in my kitchen, that not only did I change what I experienced in the past, that others that were involved have no memory of the initial memory that I remember and how our conversation that day changed policy and procedure at a company that I didn't work at, that my partner did, but he had no power and authority to change what actually changed. So it is mind blowing. I absolutely love when these things happen and I'm very happy and excited to share with you all of the details. So make sure you stay to the end. My name is Didi Pavernik and I'm the Invincible CEO and I'm the last most fun, exciting manifestation coach. You never know you need it, but yet here we are. And I'm here because manifestation is meant to be simple, easy, and fun. It's sort of like gravity. It works for you, whether you understand it or not. And what we're doing here is we're becoming more conscious in the choices that we're making and allowing our conscious mind to play along. Now, what's really important in this story is I'm, I love cognitive dissonance. I love those moments during the course of your everyday routine where you know something's not just quite right. It makes it could be a spelling error. It could be like I'm trying to speak and the words aren't coming out. Uh, it could be anything. It could even and especially laughing. Laughing is amazing cognitive dissonance because whenever there's cognitive dissonance, you're in the the precipice between one reality and the other. You're like right there. Which one are you going to choose? And it brings you to a moment of like, huh, where more clarity is needed. And this will blow your mind when I tell you the story. So it was uh, a couple of years back when my online business was really starting to explode and it was towards the end of the year and it became, I became aware of an opportunity to travel to San Diego in February of the following year. Now, at that time, my partner was working for someone else and I think he was within his first year of starting with this company. So he was still in that phase of accruing like vacation days and, and things like that. And, you know, because we don't get sick, we, we just have this wonderful reality where we have revised anything of that out. Um, you know, we really don't pay attention to all those extra benefits that you get. But I asked him one night when we were in the kitchen, we were making dinner, if he would be able to get a, a, a week off so that when we go out, you know, I, I'm going out to San Diego for this business thing and I would love for him to come with. And we hadn't been traveling for quite a while. So I thought it would really be a fun thing to do together. And I knew he'd never been out to California and I love going out to San Diego. So he said he would check. And it was the next night, came back and we're having, we're getting dinner ready. Now, if you, if you know me and my partner, I'm the fiery one of the two of us. I'm, I'm the energetic one. Uh, he's so calm, so cool, so laid back, nothing bothers him. Right. And so I said to him that second night, I said, you know, did you check in? Can, you know, do you have any vacation yet? And, and when will your vacation kick in next year? And he was really irritated, which is odd, so odd. So right away we got cognitive dissonance. And he's like, well, you're not going to believe this, that, uh, that he has some vacation, but there's no carryover to the next year. This company doesn't allow you to carry over vacation. And whatever the way it was set up, that he wouldn't have any vacation time available that early in the new year, which was really odd. And he was going off on a tangent because the only way you could actually carry something over to the next year. So it was basically whatever he did have accrued for this year, he had to use it or he was going to lose it, right? He couldn't even cash it out because he was at another company before that if you didn't want to take your vacation uh, and you didn't carry it over, you had the, the, you had the option of carrying it over or cashing it out and they would just put it into your paycheck. 
So as he was cooking, me and my daughter are sitting at the island and, and we're, we're looking at him and we're looking at each other because he's just going off. Like when I tell you, he never complains and he never has problems with anything. Like to see this happening, it, there might have just as well been an alien or a dinosaur in my kitchen because that's kind of what we were looking at, like the kind of looks we were getting, like, who is this guy? And he's, and he's, you know, getting heated and he's slamming things around as he's making the dinner and we're looking at each other and he's just going, this is ridiculous. Like I can't, I can't get vacation time and I'm working hard and I'm, I'm doing everything there and going on and on and on and on. And while he's doing this inside myself, I'm going, I'm thinking to myself, this isn't right. You know, I can't imagine going on this trip without him. I mean, if I have to, I would have, but the whole idea, especially someplace like San Diego, like I would love for him to see, it just wasn't sitting right within me. So it was probably a good 20 minutes of him going on and on and on and on about this isn't right and blah, blah, blah. And kind of, I always have the last word kind of thing. And I said to him, I said, listen, I said, well, call out if you, you'll call out sick if you have to, or we'll figure something else out or, or you'll quit there before we leave in February. But whatever it is, like I said, and I don't remember my exact words, this is unacceptable. And you're going to be there with me because I'm not going without you. And that was, but I said it with conviction and I said it with authority and it seemed at the time to dissipate things. And that was the end of it. Now, I would say if I were to guess, maybe this was the beginning of November and we were talking about a trip in February. So it seemed like a couple of weeks had passed and he brought home, I guess they were having the, you know, every fall or November, at least here in PA, where you sign up for next year's benefits, your health benefits again, you go over all the things that they offer and you're filling things out. And he was asking me for some help on that. What, what, what do I think he should choose and so forth? And we were comparing, comparing plans, which made no sense because we don't get sick. But nonetheless, there was a whole bunch of different type of things. And as we're reading, um, and I said to him, I, you know, there should be something where you can carry over your vacation time. And he looked at me and he said, what are you talking about? And I'm like, what do you mean? What am I talking about? The whole trip in February he goes, oh no, there's a, there's a whole week carryover vacation. I'll be able to carry my, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like just a couple of weeks ago, you were going nuts back and forth in the kitchen, slamming things, saying about how they don't allow you to carry over your vacation time. And now you're telling me that they're, that they, they allow it. He goes, yeah, they allow it. And I'm going to carry over a week. And I'm like, oh, oh, you know what it might be? It might be something, maybe they changed their policy and procedure. Maybe this is something new and, and how perfect it is that it's being offered at this time where this would be perfect for us because we're going to need a week vacation to be out there. So I said, do me a favor. I said, go and check with HR. Like, when did they change the policy? This is really, really cool, right? And not clicking yet all that was going on. So he comes back in, in another day or two. And I said, oh, did you talk to the HR people? And he goes, yeah. And he said, it's always been this way. I think the company was about five years old at the time. He goes, from the very beginning. And I'm like, no, 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 no. He sat here two weeks ago saying that they did, there was no carryover, that what kind of company does this? Like the only way that you could do it, that you could carry anything over is if you put it into your uh, disability, right? If you get disabled during on the job. Like I remember specifically what you said. And he's like, no, he goes, I got the policy and procedure. This has always been part of their offering. And it was really like mind blowing, confusing with what was going on. But hey, at that point, it was it didn't hit me what had happened yet. Because I, I feel like it would have been very different if I sat down and did an actual revision technique. But I realize now that and he had and here's the other thing that was mind blowing. He had no recollection of going off and, and going on a tirade for 20 minutes or so in the kitchen making dinner, which is so unlike him that he couldn't even believe that I said he was doing that. And my daughter came in and she's like, yeah, I was here. You did. And he had no recollection whatsoever of that event ever happening. So it didn't hit right away, right away. But after a while, I realized that was like an active revision, an active imaginal act. And that's where my active imaginal acts 
understanding that there's the passive imaginal act when you kind of go, okay, this is going on. I see what's going on. And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to revise us, seeing us in San Diego and knowing you're going to be there. And, and I didn't do any of that. But what I did in the moment with really big conviction, and I and honestly, when I said it, I had no clue how any of this was going to go down. But I mean, I was all down for, you know, if he had to call out sick every day, that's what we were going to do. Um, even though I know that would totally go against all every ounce of him being, but him not being there just made no logical sense. There was so much cognitive dissonance going on in that moment that during that crazy cognitive dissonance period, I made a choice. I made a choice and said, this is how it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to happen, but we're going, you're going to be there with me and it's all going to work itself out because the way that it is now is totally unacceptable. And because now when I look back at that, that's so me, that's, that's such a thing that I would do. That's such a thing that I would say in any kind of situation like that, because you can't fool your own mind. You can't pretend, like I couldn't pretend myself into that. The way that I reacted was very natural for the kind of personality that I am. And that is what active revision is because to your subconscious mind, it doesn't know the difference whether you're imagining something or you're acting it out. But what makes the big difference with passive imaginal acts is that it has to feel like you're actually acting it out. So if I would have done an actual closed eye revision type thing, I would have to invoke a state within me that felt like the real thing that I had done, that real act, like enough of this, I'm making a decision, I'm the one in charge, that's it. Like, so if I do a passive imaginal act and there's no other person around, that's what it has to feel like. So I get a lot of questions asked as, as a manifestation coach and teacher and guide, how do I know if I've done it enough? How do I know if it took? How? And, and this is when we are having a beautiful one day event on March 16th. And this is why what works for me may not necessarily work for you. However, what's really going to be powerful in this one day event is we're going to go into your memories of things that have worked for you. What's natural to you, because we all revise a little bit differently. And once you know, and that's why I use so many practical analogies and real life experiences, because once you understand how you interact with your own mind. And I can't say enough the importance of that to your subconscious mind, everything is just a choice. It doesn't care good or bad, up or down, right or wrong, in or out. It's just a choice. A dollar, five dollars, a million dollars. It's just a choice. There's no emotional attachment to it. And whatever you're doing your subconscious mind believes that you're really acting it out. Whether you're eating a piece of pizza and you're actually eating a piece of pizza or you're closing your eyes and you're imagining yourself eating a piece of pizza, the more reality that you can give it in the actual imaginal act, meaning you can taste it, you can feel it in your mouth, you can smell it, your mouth is salivating. Just even talking about pizza, my mouth starts to salivate. It's like my subconscious mind's like on it, on it, not a problem, on it. So whenever you bring yourself to a moment or you're brought to a moment of cognitive dissonance and the crazier the, the chaos seems to be, like everybody's acting out of character, the better and the, and the most efficient revision can be done if you take charge, but you have to do it your way. So because I'm like, that's it. This is the way it's going to be done. I don't know how it's going to happen. You're going to be there. I'm going to be there. End of story. That's mine. If you're more soft-spoken and you're more kind of withdrawing and, and, and deep breathing and that's how you revise, then doing my technique in that revision wouldn't work. But then you would have to figure out yours. And, but what's really important is the cognitive dissonance because whenever, or I call them those Sesame Street moments that one of those things just doesn't belong here. Or this shouldn't be happening, not like this. It doesn't make any sense. What's going on, right? They're, they're a moment of cognitive dissonance and you can get sucked into the reality that you're questioning, like what is going on here? Or you can then declare the reality that you want to happen. 
And the really cool thing about it was I didn't know at the time that all of this was happening to write dates down, to have time frames, and to tell you exactly how long it all took. So it's really interesting to see how it all comes together. And when I was titling this, Oops, I Changed the Past, I was like, should it be Oops, I Changed the Past or Oops, I Changed a Company that I have no control in or on or over? And that's why everything is you pushed out. What really happened, because he had no recollection of ever going off and, and, and complaining, right? It makes me realize that it's almost like that elevator where I was on one level of reality and here are all the characters and it's the same characters. And this is how at this level of reality, if we call that say level three, that there's no carryover of the vacation. The character went out of way out of character by complaining and getting upset and mad. Um, you know, the other character, my daughter and I were like, what's going on? There might as well have been an alien or a dinosaur, you know, walking through the kitchen because we're just like, we don't know how to behave. What's going on? This is not normal. And I leveled up by declaring, okay, this, this is what it is right now. This is when, when, when coaches and, and, and guides talk to you about, you know, allow the reality to be like in that moment, I could not change what was going on. He was going off on a tangent. I don't have, I don't have any contacts at the company, but what I could decide was in my reality, right? And my reality can overlay this reality. We're going, you're there. I don't care what we have to do. I'd like to see it work out for everybody, but guess what? It's going to work out for us, right? That was the kind of energy to it. And then I leveled everybody up because I let it go. Really didn't give it a whole lot of thought. But I started taking more and more steps to make sure that we were going to be there, like looking at airline flights and, um, you know, if, if the kids, I needed uh, someone for the kids or if I had to put the dogs in the kennel. Like I started doing the, that stuff, which made my mind realize I'm serious about this. We're going. This is going to be happening. And then from there, it had to give me my outcome. It had to give me what I commanded at that time. So I'm going to be giving more and more. Uh, examples of revision. I would love for you to join us on our one day event, which is March 16th. It is called Create Your Own Reality, Embody Your Imagination. We're going to have five amazing sessions that day. I'm going to put all of my links in the description box below. And it is an event that when you make the investment in the event, it gets paid back into you. So I'm not going to go into all the details. Once you click the link, all the details are going to be there. I'm so excited because we already have the group for it up and running. So I'm kind of pre-gaming and nurturing everybody before we get to the event. The event has 50 spots. It is going to sell out. They usually sell out quickly. And now, thank you for being here. If you have a revision story that you want to share, share it in the comments below. If you haven't yet given this video a high five to like it, like and, like and subscribe to the channel. Absolutely would love that because I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, I want to see you win. I want to see you win big. And I want to see you all the time. So I give my heart and soul to everything that we do here so that you can understand what manifestation is. You've been doing it all, you know, all along. You're doing it all the time, all day long, revision, all these wonderful techniques. The only thing now is that you're waking up to it. And as that was happening probably five, six years ago, and I've been teaching this a really long time. It's not until this, you talk about the bridge of incidents after the fact did I start to go, oh, that's what that was. Oh, that's how that unfolded. And that's exactly what revision is. So thank you guys for being here. Appreciate you staying to the end of the video. And I would love to hear your revision stories. And I'd love to see you in that one day event. Thank you so much. Enjoy.